Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Katawa Shoujo Part 11. And today we continue our conversation with Lily and Hanako at the Shanghai, so here we go. It's a little more extreme of a reaction than I expected, but still kind of cute in that Hanako way. It throws me a little off guard and only Yuko's cataclysmic re-entry shocks me back in the conversation. Are you alright there, Yuko? Do you need a hand? I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I have to do this properly. It's my job. Concentration plays across her face while she stares at the tray in her hands, as if simply looking at its contents will hold them in place. Sadly, this doesn't prove all that effective. The cups and saucers slowly dance around, occasionally clattering as they collide with one another. Taking great care, Yuko sets the tray down on the table with only the subtlest of crashes. There, see? Er, uh, well done? Thank you, Yuko. Yuko's head rockets downwards in her distinctive bow before answering. You're very welcome. Would you like to join us? There's something else I'd like to discuss about that recent order, if I may. Ah, that's right. Lily and Yuko were discussing a pile of books when I first met Hanako. Something about Lily helping with the Braille. Ah, yes. We didn't get the chance to go through them, did we? Yuko hastily sits down next to Hanako. Apparently her dedication to this job only goes as far as her concentration. Once it is broken, she suddenly loses it. I'll be in the library tomorrow afternoon if you'd like to try again. That sounds perfect. I'll meet you there after classes. Um, L lily Oh dear, that's right. Tomorrow is Monday. How could I have forgotten? I'm starting to feel a little left out of the loop here. Then again, that's to be expected. I have been here for barely a week, so it's impossible to know everyone's schedule. Well, perhaps we could come to some other arrangement. Yuko, will you be in the library later in the week? Hmm, maybe, but this is already overdue. A and there are some things I n need. This might be a problem. Lily ponders for a second before discovering the answer. I wonder, might we be able to enlist the help of another if need be? Um, to do what? You lost me quite some time ago. Being volunteered for something without even having the slightest idea what is going on isn't really my thing. And here I thought I had finally escaped the clutches of the student council and their repeated attempts to recruit me. Oh, of course. The other day I was helping Yuko sort out the new braille books in the library. But Hanako and I usually go shopping on Monday afternoons. It's quieter on that day than on weekends. Last week we couldn't go because I was busy with the festival. I managed to slip away later in the week, but Hanako couldn't make it. Well, since I can't read Braille, I'm assuming you'd like me to go shopping with Hanako? Correct. You were a great help to me the other day. I think I can handle that. Hanako, what do you think? It, if you wouldn't mind. Of course not. I'm still not familiar with all the stores in the area, so it sounds like a good idea. Oh, uh, okay. Now that we have that arranged, shall we have some tea? It's now that I realize our tea has been sitting idly by all this time getting no hotter. <laughs> it's my fault, let me pour that for you. Yuko reaches out with shaking hands, but I intercept her. She looks in no state to be handling hot liquids. It's alright, I've got it. Since you've already made the tea and sandwiches, you've fulfilled your waitress duties, right? I... I guess. Yuko relaxes a little, but still watches eagerly as I share out the assortment. As I am about to bite into the sandwich, a low, loud rumble can be heard, along with a flash of light from outside. Ah, I take it the show has started. Only now, looking outside, I realize the dusk has come and gone, leaving us in the peak of twilight. Sparking tracers arc upwards, ready to explode in the floral shapes of fireworks. Let's go watch! Oh, sorry, Lily. Please, don't miss the show on my account. From what I've heard, this isn't a bad location to watch them from. With the exception of Lily, we rush to the window of the small tea house to watch the show. 
The strobe of colored lights plays across Hanako and Yuko's smiling faces. And for a second, I forget to look out the window. In this totally new world, there are a few things that don't change. I think that's why the school makes such a fuss over the festival. It's a chance to show the similarities between everyone. The show is over all too quickly. Fireworks are expensive, even for the most well-funded schools. Before we return to our tea and sandwiches, Hanako turns to me. Um, th thanks for today. And tomorrow. That's okay. I don't think that I could have faced those crowds earlier, either. On days like this, it's more relaxing to spend some time away from everyone, don't you think? Y yeah Anyway, we've been delaying this tea for far too long now. Let's get back. Sh sure We've returned to the booth in our light meal. That sounded impressive. Bigger than last year's, at least. Yeah, it was great. I've never seen them put on such a show. It gets better every year. I'm afraid, however, that during that time, the tea has gone cold. Oh no! Let me make some more! This is my fault! Calm down, Yuko. It's nobody's fault. I take a sip from my cup just to prove the point. This tea isn't too bad cool, anyway. It's like an iced tea. Really? Yes, really. If you add a bit of sugar, it's kind of nice. Are you sure? I'm positive. Now why don't you sit down and we'll finish this together? Uh, okay. Yuko doesn't seem convinced, but sits down regardless. She carefully measures out about five teaspoons of sugar and adds them to her tea. Er, I said a bit of sugar. I know, but I like my tea sweet anyway. Curiously, I peer into her cup. As expected, hardly any of the sugar dissolves in the cold liquid. She stirs it twice before upturning the cup and drinking the contents, sugar and all, in a single mouthful. You're right, that's not bad at all. Er, good. I look back to Lily and Hanako, both of whom have finished their meal as I witness Yuko's personality in action. Not wanting to hold anyone up, I use her tactic and finish the remainder of my tea in a single swill. Well then, it seems we're all finished. Should we head back now, or do we want seconds? Yuko's expression shows that this is quite clearly not a good idea. I think that it would be best if we got back soon. We do have to get back before curfew, after all. Oh, that is a good point. I'll meet you tomorrow, Yuko. I'll be looking forward to it, Lily. Goodbye, everyone. We make our way out of the small tea house and into the dark of the night. Lily and Hanako once again take point, but under the cover of darkness, Hanako seems slightly less stressed than she did on the trip here. We move against the occasional group of people emptying the school grounds, but Hanako seems to lead us along a few minor roads, avoiding the bulk of the crowd. Outside the dorms, the school seems strangely quiet when compared to the noise of the day. Well then, thank you both for today. I think I learned a lot. You're most welcome, but I'm afraid that I really must be going. Today's been a long day. That's right, Lily spent all of today on her feet, and I can imagine that walking outside of the school would be pretty tiring for her. I feel a pang of guilt as I remember that I was probably the only one in the school that got up around 10 this morning. Sure thing. Well, I'll see you both tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Isao. night The girls return to their dorm, and I to mine. Actually, now that I consider it, today tired me out as well. Well, ladies and gents, we have arrived in Act 2. I'm sorry for the minor lag. Then again, it might come out okay in the actual recording, I don't know. Yeah, but this cutscene signifies the beginning of Hanako's path. So cute!
And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Act 2, Hide and Seek. Took us about 11 parts to get here. We're in for a wild ride. My alarm blares into my ears, only to be swiftly silenced by my fist. My body switches into auto mode, carrying my subconscious self out of bed and into my uniform. As always, my bottles of pills sit on my desk patiently waiting for me to take them and pick out my daily dosage of medicine. Seventeen pills a day. Before I know it, I'm opening the door to Class 3-3, glad to see that I'm not the only one who seems to be a little hungover from Festival Week. Every face in the classroom looks gaunt. With the festival now over, it's as if everyone's life dreams have been achieved. With nothing left to live for, the students have relied on instincts alone to guide them to class. Or maybe I'm just reading too much into it. I slowly make my way to my seat, and it's only then that I realize why the room is so peaceful. The seats beside me, mine, are blissfully empty. The world's loudest interpreter for the deaf has yet to arrive. Just as I'm about to sit down, the door flies open, revealing a resplendent Misha. Drills bobbing from the dramatic entrance and arms stretched towards the sky. Yahoo! It's all over! It would appear that not everyone is affected by the post-festival depression. The rest of the class glare at her, obviously thinking the same thing I am. Misha, still frozen in the doorway with her arms still in the air, nervously looks around. It's obvious that she senses the foul mood, but can't work out exactly what to do. Suddenly, she jerks forward. Hey! As she stumbles into the classroom, she reveals Suzune's arm still extended from where she shoved Misha. Thanks for the entertainment, but shouldn't you two take your seats? Still slightly embarrassed, Misha takes a few seconds to realize she has to translate. Oh, yeah! Chi chan says she's not happy with you ditching us last week. We were really busy! Is that so? What about the stuff I already did for you two? She says that only counts for council members. Since you declined, she doesn't owe you anything. Misha leans closer and whispers conspiratorially to my ear. Actually, I think she's just a little sore that you didn't spend the day with her. She's really thankful for your work last week, though. Sensing that she is being talked about, Shizune lightly wraps her fingers on her desk until Misha turns around to face her. I can't understand any of the fast-paced signing that's going on, but from Shizune's slightly embarrassed expression and Misha's poorly contained laughter, I can guess. While this, exchange, while this exchange is happening, the doors open once again, but this time at a much more reasonable pace. Hanako quietly, quietly enters the room and pulls the door closed behind her. Peering out from under her hair, she quickly scans the classroom. Our eyes meet, and she suddenly stiffens. She closes her eyes, takes a deep breath, and then walks over to my desk. Good, good morning, Hisao. Morning, Hanako. You're a little late, aren't you? I was talking to Lily. Uh, about today. Ah, so you've got our list then. We can leave straight after classes in, this, in that case. Sh sure. I'm looking forward to it. Hanako briefly flashes her embarrassed smile at me, then hurries off to her seat. Too cute! <laughs> Anyways, during classes it becomes apparent that it's not only the students that are a little despondent after the festival. Muto simply gives us a list of exercises from the textbook and then sits behind his desk. I totally forget about the brief lunch period for a moment, such is the banality of the day. Or the banality of the day. It's mind-numbing, and everyone seems surprised when the bells signal the end of the lessons. As I am packing up my bag, Shizune and Misha flank, the, flank and entrap me. Say, he chan it's still not too late to join up. There's a lot of post-festival paperwork for us to complete. Er, sorry, Misha, I've got plans. As if sensing the cue, Hanako appears behind me, holding a small bag, and trying to avoid eye contact with the outside world. Misha's eyes open wide, then she bursts into laughter. <laughs> you move fast, don't you, He-Chan? We won't disturb your date any further. <laughs> behind the roaring Misha, I see Shizune taking far too little interest in the scene. I might be taking this the wrong way, but I think she's deliberately ignoring me. I feel a gentle tug on my shirt, and turn to see Hanako's eyes fixed firmly on the floor. Well, let's... Got ya. Shizune, Misha, I'll see you later. And I'm still not interested in the console. Spoil, sport! 
Misha and Shizune retreat into the hallway, happily signing to each other. Got all your stuff? Let's head off. Floods of students pour out of the school gates and onto the road into town. It's a little weird. It's almost a scene from any other high school, but the illusion fades because of the occasional wheelchair or missing limb. One thing I do notice is that nobody is alone. And as Hanako and I pass through the gates, I notice that she closes the distance between us. Not enough to be considered close, but she certainly isn't at her usual just a little far position. I guess we're not familiar enough for her to get as close as she does with Lily. However, even though she has moved a little closer to me physically, mentally she seems to have traveled a mile. Her hands clutched around the leather straps of her bag to the point of whitening her knuckles, her head down and her mouth pursed closed. She almost looks like she's being walked to the principal's office for the first time. I try to stifle a giggle at the thought, but it is futile. What? What's the matter? I guess there's no point in hiding it. Sorry, for a second there, it looked like you were getting in trouble. What? What, what do you mean? I think you need to relax a little. We're not going too far, and it's only students around, right? R right. It bothers me a little to see Hanako so worked up. And you do this every week, don't you? Y yes with Lily. Of course, with Lily. I wonder, has she ever left the school without her? It doesn't seem like much at first glance, but Hanako's dependence on Lily is absurdly heavy. If she can't even handle leaving the school without her, how would she have managed to survive if the two had never met? Would she have found someone else to latch onto? And what drew her to Lily? Was it her lack of eyesight, or was Lily just kind enough to lend a hand? I wonder if anyone would have to fit the bill. I wonder if anyone would have fit the bill. Well, I'm here. Besides, we're not going far. It'll be over before you know it. Hanako's knuckles slowly regain their color as she tries to hide a small smile, but the effort of that seems to prevent further conversation. <laughs> we travel side by side down the winding road towards the town. The crowd of students thins as we continue along the sidewalk. Faster students rush ahead, and the less mobile ones fall behind, rarefying the crowd into nothingness. By the time we reach the convenience store, we are practically alone. Using me as a shield between herself and the attendant, Hanako moves through the narrow aisles, adding an assortment of items to her basket. Bread, milk, tea, thyme? What kind of convenience store sells herbs? Then again, nothing about this town seems normal, which may not be such a bad thing in retrospect. Everything is so different and uncomfortable, dwelling on such matters isn't really an option. When I think about that, it reminds me of Hanako. No matter how much you try, you can't escape her scars. They still interrupt my train of thought when I see them. As much as I don't want to admit it to myself, I think I'm forcing myself to try to ignore them. Not that I am scar-free myself. The jagged line down my sternum will never completely fade away. And same here, folks. I actually had open-heart surgery, too, and I got a long gash going down my chest, too, so I can relate to he's sell on that note. Anyways, back to the story. I just have the luxury of being able to hide it easily. But, in a way, both of our scars remind me that we're all in this place for a reason. Hanako throws one last item into her basket, then sheepishly holds it out to me, along with a few banknotes. Could... could, could you... Pl please? It takes me a second to understand what she's trying to say. Oh, you want me to pay for this? She nods, but doesn't look up. I guess this task falls to Lily on the usual occasions. Sure, let me just grab a couple of things. Hastily, I grab a few essential items for myself and head for the counter with Hanako in close tow. The attendant gives me an, an, an indifferent nod as he scans in the items. I suppose just ignoring us is one way to deal with the an with the anatomies of a uh, yeah, anatomies of Yamaku. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that word right. They must just get a lot of students here, being the closest store to the school. The staff must all have their own way of dealing with us, or maybe they don't. Maybe it's only me who thinks twice about my unique schoolmates. Our transaction complete, Hanako and I head back out onto the street. The road is pretty much abandoned now. The students that were heading out have already left, and nobody has started returning just yet. And with only the school ahead on the road, there doesn't seem to be anyone else around. The emptiness certainly reflects on Hanako, her arms by her sides, each carrying a bag, her head no longer bowed, and back to the upright position. It's almost as if she were enjoying this walk. 
So, why all these weird things? Mixed spice? Why would you need that in school? I sometimes like to m make food. Well, yeah, so do I, but spices? That's a little more advanced, don't you think? N not really. Well, I think it's cool. You'll have to teach me one day. Sh sure. She doesn't seem all that sure, but pushing the point doesn't seem all that wise. At the very least, she seems a great deal happier than she did on the walk down here. That alone makes me a little happier. Outside the girls' dorm, Hanako and I sort out the grocery bags with our respective purchases. In comparison, my things look positively plain. I tell you, you're putting me to shame here. N no I'm not... I just... I'm only joking. I have a stack of homework that I skipped last week, so I must leave now. Will you be alright getting, getting that to your room? Y yeah Sure? Okay then, I'll see you tomorrow. But bye We part ways and I return to my room. Piles of papers sit upon my desk, begging to be completed. With the entire ruckus of the last week, I've barely had any time to catch up. I tried to keep up with my studies while I was in the hospital, but some of this stuff I've never seen before, even back in my old school. Totally unprepared, I pop the top on a can of drink and get to work. And our first day is officially over for Act 1, or uh, sorry, Act 2, bleh. Again, love this music. Yeah, we'll try to accomplish a little bit more. The days are really starting to heat up. This morning I awoke covered in sweat. By the time the student body starts leaving their dorms for breakfast and morning duties, the sun has taken full effect. Oddly, that puts me in high spirits. It's not even 8 yet. Oh wait, it's not even 8, yet I feel that this day is going to be one of those pleasant, tranquil, warm ones. If I weren't at a school that considered every absence from class as a sign of life-threatening situation, I'd consider skipping the whole day and just relaxing in the school gardens. Yes, today will be a genuinely lazy day. For a second, I stop in mid-stretch and consider the nurse's warning about exercise. Maybe I should have kept up those morning jogs. Running with someone like Emmy might have been a little testing, but if I worked at my own pace... Ah, uh, who am I kidding? I couldn't stick to something like that without some kind of motivation. It's not like I sit around all day. The walk to and from the convenience store counts as exercise, right? Especially the walk back up the hill. Yeah, it's no big deal. Compared to months lying in a hospital bed, I'm getting plenty of exercise. It seems that I'm not alone in my appreciation of the day. Nearly every member of the class is glancing through the window and into the tantalizing sky. Even the steadfast Shizune seems to lack her usual vigor for schoolwork. Misha, as brazen as ever, has even unbuttoned the top buttons of her shirt and is fanning herself with a notebook. I must have been staring as she's now sticking her tongue out at me. <laughs> However, she shows no sign of halting her efforts, nor is she trying to hide the fact. The lunch bell seems to catch everyone by surprise, and the class empties at a much slower pace than usual. The heat seems to be draining the need to rush from everyone. Well, almost everyone. <laughs> hey, Sal? Hey there, Hanako. What can I do for you today? Hanako already has a lunch bag in hand. I don't have to be a detective to work out where this is going. Um, would you like to have lunch with us again? I... I brought enough for everyone. Awesome! You don't have to be so stiff about it, though. Ah, right. I take it we're going to the tea room? P please Lily said she'll meet us in there, so we should. Should. Should? Should go ahead together. Sounds like a plan. This heat has made me pretty hungry. Hanako breathes a sigh, breathes a sigh of relief, and I gather my things together. As usual, the aura of the tea room is refreshing, feeling isolated from the rest of the world. Then again, the usual din of the school seems to be a bit subdued, most likely from laziness promoted by heat exhaustion. Hanako slowly spreads her food on the table, intently focusing on every little movement, as if she's trying to keep her mind off other thoughts. It's not much, but I can tell from her demeanor that she has prepared everything with utmost care. I guess Lily isn't here yet. Should we start without her? Sh she'll be here soon. Hanako struggles with the lid of the container of rice. Here, let me help with that. I take the container from Hanako's hands and try to force it to open the lid. 
Try as I might, it seems wedged shut. Let me guess, did you put this in while the rice was still hot? Y yes I was in a rush. I put the container on the table between us. I thought so. It looks like this is wedged shut. We'll need some hot water to get it open. But that could be a pain in here. We'd get water everywhere. Well, in that case, how about I contribute to today's meal? At the door, Lily smiles while holding up a bag stocked with various buns and bread rolls. I can't help but do the same. Since you two had a change of plans because of me, I thought I would bring a little something. Thanks, Lily. Here, let me get that for you. With a little guidance, Lily's bread assortment joins Hanako's riceless, riceless platter. I hastily make some tea to, com to complete the picture. Well, I'm looking forward to this. As I take a bite, I notice Hanako trying her hardest to not look like she is looking at me. <laughs> it's nothing special, but then again, I can't really complain. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to cooking for myself. Not bad. I guess this is made with the stuff you bought yesterday? Y yes Hanako's eyes shout at me, begging for some kind of feedback. Well, it was clearly worth it. Thanks, Hanako. I... I wanted to show you this after yesterday. It's okay. I was just a little surprised at the stuff you were buying. Hanako's always like to experiment when it comes to food. I think it's good. I think it's good most of the time. While Lily's smile doesn't waver, the slight change in her tone tells me that things have not gone so well in the past. And it's not like Hanako has many people to sample her cooking. Hang on. Was Lily waiting for me to go first? She didn't start eating until after I said it was alright. Her cheeky grin tells me that this was a deliberate action on her part. I'll have to try and work out how to get one over on her in the future to make up for this. Well, it's good, and that's all that counts, right? R right Lily, satisfied in not being the first to sample Hanako's creation, begins to consume the food in front of her. I find myself staring as I watch her chopsticks gently touch the plate their tips delicately poking and tracing to quickly ascertain the positions of the food as she dexterously picks it up. One might think she were a child playing with her food if not for the situation, though she does it with such care and thoughtlessness that it's obvious that this is simply how she eats this kind of meal. Not wanting to miss out, I start filling up myself. Hanako takes a different approach, waiting until Lily and I have our hands clear before quickly snatching up her share. Before long, the containers are empty, save for the still-shut rice container. Thank you, Hanako. That was filling. No, no. Thank you for the bread. Yes, it would have been a disaster if not for that. You're both welcome. But now I must be getting back. It's far too easy to be late after eating here. Yeah, I see what you mean. I think we'll just clean up here and then head off. Well then, good day. Lily leaves, her cane tapping away down the quiet hallway. Hanako and I quickly pack our things and stay seated, waiting for the bell. Together we stare out the window and into the endless azure sky. If it weren't for the peeling of the bells, I would have sworn that time had stopped. Alrighty folks, I think it's a good as ti a good a spot as any to stop this uh, part. So stay tuned for Let's Play Katawa Shoujo Part 12. When we'll continue along Hanako's path, and we'll see what else awaits us. Anyways, see you then, peoples!